Blog Talk Radio. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth. Nothing. Uh huh. This is who we are. We are the Haudenosaunee. The Haudenosaunee consists of five nations. The five nations are from the east. The Mohawk Nation, coming in a little bit further, is the Oneida Nation, Onondaga Nation, Cayuga Nation, and the Seneca Nation, to the west, keepers of the western door. And so this is our unity belt. This is the belt of the Haudenosaunee. It represents each fire. It represents each nation. It represents the forest. The forest is our home, is our house, our longhouse. And in our longhouse, Mother Earth is our floor. The woods are our walls. The sky is our ceiling. At one point in our time, We weren't getting along with each other. We received a message from the peacemaker. The peacemaker paddling across the water, the lakes here, came paddling across and brought this message to us. He said that we're sadding, making sad our creator because of what we do to each other in a not so pleasant way. We had wars with each other and what he did was unite us as one. The Haudenosaunee. He explained to us of how our responsibilities are. They were given to us from long time ago at our origin from the Sky Woman who brought down instructions, instructions to Turtle Island to grow. And the people that will be walking here about on Turtle Island are to be sharing their gratitude, and their breath and their water with you. And that's what we were instructed to do. And as we did grow and we expanded, then we start forgetting our original teachings. So the peacemaker brought this message to remember this, remind us of the Ganohanyu, the Thanksgiving address, to be grateful for all on Mother Earth that's provided for us so that we can walk in peace and contentment. And so the message that was received also taught us Governance, 
It taught us, reminded us of our old teachings that we start forgetting and just leaving behind. And the peacemaker brought this message to pick up your bundle and re-examine what's in that bundle. See, each and every one of us carries a bundle in our lives. We understand what's in our bundle. Somebody else might know a little bit of what's in your bundle, what's in my bundle, but we know what's in our own bundle. And whether we're giving gratitude and expressing our way in song and dance and speech and sharing and caring, we know that ourselves. So we're reminded by a peacemaker. Peacemaker brought this message to our people over a thousand years ago. Over a thousand years ago. And united us with the strands woven together of the sinew of the deer. And in the Thanksgiving address, we acknowledge the deer. As we acknowledge the deer as the leader of the four leggeds that run through the forest. As each and every one mentioned in our Thanksgiving address has a leader, including the people. The berries have a leader. It's the strawberries. All that is woven into this. The unity, the strength, the one bowl concept of what's provided for us here on Mother Earth. What's in that bowl is in there for all of us so that we know wherever we go in the forest by our instructions that there's going to be some left for the next generation. It's our responsibility to make sure. And so by making sure we share gratitude with the berries, we share gratitude with all the food sources. Junhekwe takes care of us. The vegetables, the corn, the beans, and the squash. And so in the, in the time frame that we have in this panel, it's hard to explain over a thousand years of knowledge in a matter of minutes. And so we, we do the best that we can to cut short and bring the points across that's going to help each and every one of us individually contribute to Mother Earth's well-being for future generations to come. As we ponder it, as we ponder this pandemic that affects us in so many ways, in so many understandings, in so many languages, it affects all of us. Mother Earth has the ability to heal. She's given the right time and chance to do so. We work with her and we all heal. So individually, we got to know that. we got to know our responsibility to Mother Earth. And so this was shared also. This is an old teaching. A very old teaching. As we gather any kind of medicines, any kind of foods, the animals, as we hunt to feed our families, we acknowledge to the first one that we, we that we meet in the woods, in the forest. We acknowledge to them what our purpose is of gathering is and who it's for, and we explain that. We communicate with the plants, with the animals, with the birds, with the water, and we don't take the first one that we see. That way we teach our younger generations always that there'll be at least one left for them. And so when they carry that on, they always talk to the first one with gratitude and acknowledgement of their contributions to help us be at peace and contentment also. And to share that message with your relatives. And so we share that with our relatives and it gets carried on. So we always know there's going to be some left for the next person, for the next one that needs the assistance of what we're after at that time, whether it's medicine or food, berries, whatever it may be. We share that. And so in our, in our teachings, in our oral teachings that are still going on today, we still carry them on. We still orally talk of what our ancestors had left here for us. And in those teachings, we have the knowledge of the great law of peace. What we, what we refer to as the great law of peace is the great pine tree that was planted and all our weapons of war were buried so that the waters can wash bloodstains from it. 
And the, the next generation won't never see it because it's underground buried, being cleansed, being healed, the weapons of war. And the weapons of war, we got to remember, they're not just knives and arrows and hatchets. Tomahawk, you hear that word? Those aren't the only weapons. Some of the weapons that are buried in there also is jealousy, greed, all these things that you as humans know can cause a war are put to be cleansed under the great tree of peace and never to be seen again by our children. And it's our responsibility that that tree holds firm. And so we lock arms. We lock arms as leaders of our nation, of our confederacy, Iroquois Confederacy, Five Nations, Haudenosaunee, that's who we are. We lock arms to protect that tree in a circle. And the teachings are to be carried on orally for each generation coming. Preserved that way so that they know where we come from, what we've been through, how we live so that they can prepare for what's to come. You have to understand all of that, where you come from. You have to understand how you got here, what helped you survive, what contributions did you do to protect future generations to have the ability to grow to the age that you are now as an individual. Your contributions to Mother Earth, to society, to life, to help future generations is very important. Your actions today are very important. To make sure that there's peace and contentment available and in abundance for the future generations to come. Those are in the teachings. Those are what we share. And then when when the people came from their big landed on the shores in the east, they brought with them some diseases. They were sickly, some stuff that we never heard of, never seen. They had no medicines to tend to it. They brought with them that doctrine of discovery, the Christian doctrine of discovery. And what had happened now is they settled here for a bit and then the ship went back to wherever it came from to explain to their people what they have found here. And then they returned. And as they returned, they found these villages that they visited at some time on their last journey were all sun-bleached skulls. They were dead. And they were dead from the disease, whether it be smallpox or Whatever they brought with them. There's a number of diseases that brought with them that our people here couldn't heal from. They knew they had diseases. They understood that. They were immune to it. They've had it for a long time. That's why they were leaving their home to find peace somewhere else. And they found it. When they had a doctrine that explained to them that they could have that land that they find if there was already no Christians there. And so they used this disease as a tool to share with the indigenous peoples of the land to convince them to become Christian. They convinced them by telling them that you see these people who are not alive anymore. You see their bones. We're doing this as a work of our God. Without even raising a sword, we can wipe out a whole village. And since our people had never seen anything like that kind of sickness, did kill people, whole families, whole villages, they believed them. And they became Christian. An early contact. Further into the woods, 
away from the shorelines of where the big boat landed. Further into the woods, the people were being very skeptical, the indigenous people of the forest, because they saw people that were accepting to be Christian also dying of the same sickness without anybody raising a sword to take their lives. But they were still dying. And also further into the forest, we've noticed in our oral teachings, our people had noticed that these newcomers to the land were not only carrying a disease, they were stealing. They were grave robbing. And they found that the trade with the people of the forest, that we liked our necklaces and our hair, our, our dress and our beadwork and our fancy work, bone work and so forth. They start digging graves and finding this stuff and trading it. There's one particular story that I was told when I was young was they traded to a person over near Albany, New York, the indigenous people nation there. And they recognized that jewelry as something that they had already gifted. They made it and gifted to someone. And that person had passed away. And so they knew right away, these people aren't right because that was buried with a man. And they followed that back and they spread word quick that these people, what these people are doing. And so this pandemic that goes on started way back in the 1490s, 1500s of disease and untruths. Hindsight Radio, the place for right knowledge. Peace, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to it. Another episode of the Truth Tuesday show here on Hindsight Radio. This is your host, Akeem L. I hope everybody's doing good, doing well, living prosperously, living peacefully. Uh, myself, I'm always doing good. Everything's great. Life is good. Um, today, I got a lot to talk about. Um, I was listening to that 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 recording of the true name. I, I know I screwed it up last week when I was talking about the indigenous people. It's Haudenosaunee is how it was pronounced. I think I was saying Haudenosaunee. It's Haudenosaunee. That is the correct pronunciation of those people, people of the Longhouse. The French called them the Iroquois, so that is Iroquois is not their true name. Haudenosaunee is the true name. Um. If you're uh, Facebook friends with me, you'll see I posted some uh, information about their constitution on my page. And if you listen to last week's show, you heard me say that they are the true, the your ancestors, the indigenous people of this land are the true founding fathers and mothers of this land. And in their culture, they show great respect for everyone, man, woman, child, young and old, even the infirmed. Even the nature they show respect for, food sources, they gave great thanks. You know, and as in that little clip I had talked about, what he was talking about, they weren't always at peace. They had war, then the great peacemaker came. Oh. So, and when you read about the great peacemaker, you see he has a lot of similar characteristics to your Christian theology about Christ or Jesus. Um, we know now, we know better now, the truth. We know now that what we went to school and got taught was especially when it came to history, was one big lie. They gave credit to a bunch of Europeans as being the founding fathers and how brilliant they were to even draft this document, how they were so intricate in finding every detail. 
But when you really sit down and think about it, a, a group of people that came from a monarchy did not even have the the insight or intelligence level to create a document as sophisticated as the Constitution. They got it from a people who was already organized, civilized, and well advanced in becoming peaceful people with each other and peaceful with the land. We know that these settlers or invaders came over here and they saw nothing but opportunity to take advantage of people who wanted to only live in peace. So we got to realize that to even want to be a part of this system is to be a part or be against your very ancestral background. And from the biblical point of view, you're most supposed to honor thy mother and thy fathers. This is why we are falling short as a people. Because we're not honoring ancestral traditions. We're honoring other people's traditions and forsaking our own. We are worshiping other people's concepts of God and not worshiping or giving honor to the true concept of God. You see? So we have to really rethink our steps, rethink everything. And even with reading that document, I have rethought a lot of things. So in the coming weeks, months ahead, I have a lot of things I'm going to be doing. Um, if you're a part of my private membership, you already have a glimpse of where I'm going uh, with this, what I'm going to be doing, uh, things I'm going to be revising, reinventing, and to make our walk or our journey into getting what we deserve as a people uh, make that easier, make the path clearer. Without all of the extra convolution that you find so often on YouTube and other forums that want to teach, you know, people love to get up and teach without having full understanding of what they're talking about. Without vetting the information, they see stuff and they run with it and, you know, then they get caught out there realizing that that was a bad decision or a bad choice uh, or a path that they're following. So, um, we have to get out, put our, get ourselves together. And we got to start working with each other more, trusting, showing love and peace towards each other. Uh, and those who do not want to join in that, you know, let them do what they do and you continue your journey to peace, prosperity, you know, wealth, and all in good health, the things that you may want in your life. Um, and start to think bigger for yourself. What, just look at look at what you're doing now. And it may be great. Like right now, everything's great. But I know I have more work to do to get to where my final destination is. Um, while I am thinking about it. So over the weekend, something great happened to me. Um, something that, you know has been in the preparation for, uh, for a little while now. I got engaged uh, Friday. So that's official. And uh, you all know, probably know who that is. Uh, that's Beth. That's the host of the uh, Chiba Power School Show, uh, Raising Independent Thinking Show. We've known each other for a while. I mean, probably 2016. You know, but that's a, another story too long to even go into it. But um, there it is. I just want to put that out there. Um, some of you guys have been emailed me for some documents. I'm getting back into first. I need to handle something else. Uh, Jason, I know you sent me an email about a file. I'll get that to you between today and tomorrow. You get that. But let's go. Let's go back to what I was talking about. We need to get ourselves together. And. Number one, I'm talking to the fellas. We have to get out of the mindset to dog women in general. You know, yes, we have issues and we get, don't get along. 
sometimes. But sometimes we have to take a hard look at ourselves before we start looking at them. See, I can only talk to the males because I'm a male. And the women need to talk to the women about whatever issues that might arise. So y'all, y'all, y'all deal with that. I'm just dealing with the, the, the men. If you want change in your life, you have to change. It's not the other person. It's not the job. It's not the situation. It's you. It's your thoughts. It's everything you're thinking that's creating the responses you're getting. And I know, you know, some things, you know, people are doing that are not good, but we have to ask ourselves, why is this in my life? Why am I dealing with this? And if you really, really, really dig deep and you're really being honest with yourself, you'll see that somewhere, somehow you play a part in that. Like Reverend Ike has said, if if someone doesn't like me somewhere inside me, I don't like myself. And that is a tough pill. And brothers, if you are involved with a sister and and, and y'all not getting along and she's not showing you the affection or whatever you're looking for, look inside yourself first. Because somewhere deep inside you, there is an energy connecting to that attitude that you're getting. Now, sisters, this doesn't give you an opportunity to shake your responsibility as with these, you know, being hard to deal with. That doesn't give you the, the, the license to keep doing that. And, and I see a lot of sisters posting stuff about men this and men that. And, you know, y'all, if y'all want us to do right, y'all got no. It doesn't work like that. It's 100-100. You put forth your best effort as a man, and she needs to put forth her best effort as a, as a woman. You want him to do right, you need to be doing right, too. Because in order to attract good in your life, you have to be good. You have to be doing right. You have to be saying, you know, being respect to be respected, you must be respect. Uh, give respect to yourself, and I see that a lot of times, where I see women wanting respect, but they're not even showing respect for their own self, doing things that you know would cause other people to react to them in a less respectful way. Away. So, but back to the brothers. You can do it. You could be greater. I see brothers doing it every day, running their businesses every day. If you have a business every day, you should be putting it out there somewhere. With all of the technology we have, there's no excuses, none whatsoever for you not to be successful in your business. There's too many avenues. Invest in yourself. And one of the key ways to invest in yourself is to think success. How do you expect to get with a system, be, be able to provide and to be a leader if you're not taking leads, leadership in the finance area? We need finances to survive. There's no way around it. We need it. And if you don't have it, that means you're not taking leadership. You're not taking ownership. You placing blame somewhere else. You're looking for a handout, maybe. And some of y'all are looking for handouts from Jesus. Y'all like the people that wait and want to be fed after you've already been fed. Instead of getting the knowledge to feed yourself. And I deal with a lot of you brothers, and some of y'all, you know, have some work to do on taking ownership of your study. Sending questions about every little thing. Some of these questions are so outlandish or out just how do these, you know, I think of why do I ask this question? It's obvious. And, and it just simply comes from you not reading and wanting me to just answer. You get a question, pop in your head, let me email. Instead of keep reading the document and coming up with a conclusion. Because pretty soon, not pretty soon, maybe, you know, there's going to come a time where I won't be available to answer your question. I'm not going to be on this show for 10, 20, 30 years. I'm going big and I'm leaving behind for someone else to do the work. Even if Christ moved on and he left the work to his apostles, he left that conscious work to you. Everyone should take part of this. 
But brothers, once again, a lot of you guys are doing great. But it's always room to be better. It's always room to make things great. And that is the only way you're going to do that is con- continually checking your thoughts, checking your mind, see what you're thinking. That bad thing you're thinking about another person came from your thoughts. And it's going to create that reality. They're going to become that bad thing to you. That suspicion you have about people is going to manifest. You can't be showing love and have suspicion at the same time. Yes, it's always good to be cautious and be mindful because not everybody is on a high level of thinking or a high level of consciousness. You got to be, you know, watch out. But you'll know it when it comes and you'll deal with it. But don't go looking for it. Deal with it as it comes. And always be in the spirit of truth and peace. Have prosperous thoughts. That's the energy you're going to emanate, and that's what you'll get back for the most part. My life genuinely, most of the time, is peaceful. The only time it's not peaceful is when I have negative thoughts or I choose to react negatively. That's the only time it's not peaceful. Where I'll take the situation and I'll choose to react in a negative or angry or frustrated way. Remember, we have we got the gift of choosing how we react. We don't have to raise our stress level to get our point across. We don't have to do it. So at seven thirty-two, I want to um, talk about this document. The same document I read last week. Oh, uh, this time I want to read a statement of Arlinda Locklear, Esquire, Knoxville, MD. But before I do that, I'm sorry. Uh, you should go back to listen to Bombay's show. He's been doing a great job speaking from the heart, talking about his experiences, dropping some real mind science in his shows. Great show. Go back and listen to it. Um, uh, on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., we have the Solomon Temple Show. I've been failing to mention that. We do that show probably three weeks out of the month. Uh, so tomorrow will be 10 a.m. There will be another show with him. That's just talking about just healing. And um, Thursdays is Jessica and Tasia's show, The Divine Connection. Tune in to their show weekly. Uh, my son's show is on Saturday. I mean, on Fridays, sometimes Saturdays. And then there's uh, Bathsheba's show, Raising Independent Thinkers show. Um, Always get information about education. Last week's show was about creating a diploma for your child. The very thing that you will need if they want to go off to some job and show their credentials, she she teaches that. And she also offers that on her website at a home-school... I'm messing it up. Oh, um, <laughs> if she put it in the chat, if she's listening to it, I'll announce it. But uh, her website, she's got all of those things. Plus, the webinar on homeschooling is ready, and it's it's available for purchase on her site as well. Um, and of course, my show every Tuesday. All right. So last week I talked about how. There are no such thing as founding fathers, right? That is a myth, a fantasy, and a fake out. Your ancestors is the one who told the the, the the leaders of within these 13 colonies, if you guys want peace, you need to do what we do. You need to follow in our steps on how we achieve peace. And how, how can what they're calling the Iroquois Confederation, the... Haudenosaunee people, the people of the Longhouse, how were they able to do it? Because they had already been through that. They had already been through that centuries before. Wars and fighting, and then they had to figure out a way to stop it. And they did it. So they were the perfect people to teach by example a people who was a stranger to peace. A stranger to people having equal rights because they came from a monarchy. 
they were strangers. So they came to people that was very familiar with these, with this uh, style of government to get assistance. And pe- the, these people, the Haudenosaunee people, being as good as they, of people as they were, took them in under their wing and taught them the ways of peace. And we all know how they got rewarded. Right? We all know how your ancestors got rewarded for that kindness. It's that goes back to that saying no good deed goes unpunished. The bad guy always finished last. You see? They got cheated. And these people that they gave government to and showed them how to create a constitution, created a constitution that looked like theirs, almost, but wasn't quite the same. What wasn't quite the same? Number one, how elitists were elected. They didn't have an electoral college that overrode decisions of the people. They didn't have these fun. It, it was solely the people's desire to see who was going to be in leadership. And one of the main people who, who, uh, was in charge of creating leaders of their clan or of their tribe was the women. The clan mothers. See, the reason why your your ancestors was able to thrive in Black Wall Street and things like that because they had already been in business before. They knew how to run government. They knew how to run it on a big level and a small level. It was nothing new to them. And then these Europeans who knew nothing or didn't know how to do it in a peaceful way got jealous and went to war with these people simply because they knew how to keep their lives together together better than them. It was straight jealousy and hate. Nothing. They were living in impoverished conditions and couldn't stand to see your ancestors living good. And then if you listen to the clip, just rewinding back in history a few centuries ago, um, they brought disease to a people who didn't know disease, not those diseases. And because those people were sickened and people died, they used Christianity as a tool to, to give them hell and damnation. Look, your, your people are dying. Your God is not helping you. And we fell for the 42 fake out. You know, we, we, we didn't realize nature could take care of these things. We forgot that nature, not didn't realize, we forgot nature has all the answers. Mother Earth has all the answers. And we believe, we looked away from what our ancestors were telling us to do when we got sick, and we looked at them, this God in the sky for healing. We all know what did, that did to us. People use their religion as an excuse to destroy a people who was peaceful, who welcomed them in. Did y'all know that there's a practice, and this was a woman, one of the clan mothers. She had a long house, and people would come there to eat. And some of the warring tribes, members of different tribes would come there, but she had one rule. No warring inside of this longhouse. You can come here and eat, and peace is always going to be under this roof, right? So I, I can't remember her name now, but uh, oh, I'll have it. I got a. I was watching a video and I was reading. Well, one of the rules between the tribes was this, or the clans. How are we going to put it? If you fed someone out of a pot. They shared a pot of food. Now they become brothers and sisters. They're family now. That was tradition. So because they hold tight to that tradition, once these warring tribes warred against each other and they ate out of the same pot, they were no longer compelled to fight. Why? Because, <laughs> because they ate out of the same pot. Now they're brothers. 
Now it'd be like fighting a relative. And they didn't believe in that. So a woman was the one who brought, started to bring peace between these different clans. And that's why the clan mothers were so important in, the, in that society. I stress this because in this society, even in our Christian beliefs, it's patriarchal. And if you start off in the early scriptures, women are just not, when they talk about people having children, they say, Seth begat this one and this, this man begat that and begat that. Like, you know, almost a, a, a homosexual overtone. And I'll say it without remorse. Christianity on its face is a homosexual religion. And if you, I'm, I'm lying, just go to churches. A lot of these churches are you know, full of people who practice homosexuality, mainly the men. Catholic church. I mean, you give me one church, you didn't have the minister of music who was in the homosexual. Tom, the pastor was caught sleeping with boys. I mean, it, this is, this is, I'm not saying anything that's not true. Maybe there's an overtone of homosexuality come out of the Christian religion. Maybe, you know, maybe it is. You watch a pastor for a long time, eventually he starts having feminine characteristics from preachers. <laughs> I know some, you know, it's like I keep me going too far. No, I'm not. It's time to stop the BS and call things what it is. And if you don't like it, you know, they they got you can chant list, you know, I'm sorry, I you may be offended what I'm saying, but I'm gonna say what I have to say. Why? Because this is the Truth Tuesday show that I created. And I get to say what I my opinions here. You know, you don't have to believe it. But, I mean, what I'm saying I, I, is, is a fact because that's what's going on. And because of this, the, this overtone, it has stepped on the woman's femininity in society. Her strengths played it down. And this is why we're so out of balance. We don't have a balance. This is what the people, the Hulk and the Shoney, figured out to create this peace. To include them in government. So, without further ado, let me let me go ahead and read what Miss Locklear, Mister Miss Locklear, stated. Alinda Locklear, Esquire, which means she's a lawyer, right? I appreciate the opportunity to appear before the committee this morning in Senate Congressional Resolution seventy six. This Congress would have reaffirmed the longstanding and historic government-to-government -government relationship that exists between Indian tribes and the United States. So it's saying it's a government-to-government -government relationship, two governments working together, right? In keeping with that commitment, it is appropriate that this Congress also review the quality of the historic relationship and make adjustments in the present-day relationship between Indian tribes and the United States where necessary and helpful. To aid in this process, I would like to commit, comment this morning on the quality of that historic relationship that exists between the United States and the Indian tribes to give a sort of historic still life as to what the quality of that relationship was at the time of the ratification of the Constitution. At the time of the first white contact on the North American continent, Indian tribes functioned as a practical matter as governments. Because of this reality, European governments dealt with Indian tribes as self-governing people. From its formation, the United States adopted this same mode of dealing with Indian tribes, that is, as dealing with them as independent nations and sovereigns. So when I say you guys are sovereigns, you are. It is. They said it. Even before declaring their independence from Great Britain, the United States embarked on this political relationship with Indian tribes. In July 1775, the Continental Congress resolved that securing and preserving the friendship of Indian nations is a subject of the utmost moment to these colonies. And it becomes to us to be very active, vigilant, and exerting every prudent means to strengthen those ties. Consequently, the Continental Congress established three Indian departments, one in the northern, one in the middle, 
and one in the southern part of the United States. So let, let me get this, let me show you. Northern, which is your northeast, right? Middle, your Midwest, right? And middle, Midwest, Mideast, and the southern, what we call the south. Okay, so that means your people was all over the place, okay? Commissioners were appointed by the Congress for each of these departments. These commissioners were, in effect, ambassadors to the Indian nations located within their particular departments. Throughout the Revolutionary War and early into the Constitutional period, these ambassadors had the primary responsibility of maintaining peace with Indian tribes and also addressing other issues. For instance, failing the maintenance of peace, the conduct of war with Indian nations. This theme, the conduct of peace and war with Indian nations was a primary theme. In fact, of the federal tribal relationship throughout the Articles of Confederation period and well into the early constitutional period of this country's history, from 1775 on, the Continental Congress was engaged actively on almost a daily basis in the conduct of Indian affairs. The press of Indian business was such that the Continental Congress established a standing Indian, com Indian committee in 1776. That committee directed the work of the Indian commissioners on all issues between the United States and Indian tribes that covered such things as trade, the integrity of territorial boundary, boundaries for those nations, crimes committed by citizens of one nation or the other in their territories, and also the issues of war and peace. All of these matters are, of course, the usual business of nations and the fact that the federal government and the tribal governments dealt with each other on these issues shows that both understood the other as a nation and assumed that the nation-to-nation -nation relationship would exist between the two. Congress mode of conducting business with Indian tribes also reflect their respect for Indian tribes as sovereigns. Congress received visiting tribal delegations as it did foreign ones. It defrayed the tribal delegations expenses, bestowed gifts on tribal dignitaries and exchanged previously approved diplomatic communities, communications with tribes. Congress used the language of international diplomacy in dealing with tribes. Tribal delegations were referred to in speeches and treaties as dignitaries and as deputies. Tribes were also called nations in the third person and as brothers when addressed directly, both of which denote equality between the two parties in relationship. It says equality, not one above the other. And the administration of Indian affairs itself was handed directly in Congress, much as Congress handled the administration of, uh-oh, because I'm going I'm to I'm connect this in a second. Even the executive department after the ratification of the Constitution handled Indian affairs at the cabinet level up until 1824, directly through the Secretary of War rather than through intervening bureaucracy. So they were saying the Secretary of War handled the business. Okay. Perhaps the strongest evidence of the character and relationship between the United States and the Indian tribes is the fact that these relations were conducted through treaties. Of course, the very fact that treaties were signed indicates a nation-to-nation -nation relationship. Chief Justice Marshall observed, the Constitution, by declaring treaties already made as well as those to be made to be the supreme law of the land, has adopted and sanctioned the previous treaties with the Indian nations and consequently their mark among those powers who are capable of making treaties. The words treaty and nation are words of our own language, selected in our diplomatic and legislative procedures by ourselves having a definite and well understood meaning. We have applied them to Indians as we have applied them to our nations on the earth. They are applied to all in the same sense. The terms of the Indian treaties also reflect the parity of the relationship between the United States and the Indian tribes. The first Indian treaty concluded by the Continental, Continental Cong Congress that with the Delaware concluded on September 17, 1778 provided for an ally alliance between the contracting parties. It proved provided for the punishment of each other's citizens for crimes committed within their territories. It provided for trade. It provided also that the Delaware nation might co confederate with other Indian nations to form a state whereof 
the Delaware Nation shall be the head and have a representation in Congress. Let me stop for a second. I'm going to pull up a DS-11, and I'm going to read the action conditions and show you how this connects. Give me one second. Let's see. What time is it, by the way? Let me see. All right. I got, I got a few minutes. All right. Remember, I just read earlier in this document, a few paragraphs back, that they were dealt the same way you would do with a foreign nation. All right? Or, let me read it. This is why action conditions on this DS-11 is important, that you understand what it's talking about. Okay. It says in here, in the action conditions, I'm reading the second paragraph. It says, I have not since acquiring United States citizenship slash nationality been naturalized as a citizen of a foreign state. Taking an oath for made of affirmation or other form of declaration of allegiance to a foreign state. Remember, when you look up foreign state, it just so the definition says someone who shows allegiance to a foreign state. They made that definition so vague you could not figure out what it was talking about. Remember, I read last week there was 50 chiefs, meaning each what we're calling states now, those were 50 leaders over each one of those territories or countries. This is why when you read, let's, let's pull up the GPO manual real quick. Because I have to show y'all this, what I'm talking about. GPO style manual. And it was right in our face on the page 109 of this GPO manual. And when you're reading this, it'll say, let me go before that. In nationalities, etc., it says the state of de- demonyms in Chapter 17 useful table shows forms we use for nouns and adjectives denoting nationality and designating natives of the state. The following forms we use, and then they have all of the names. Now, I do know that each one of the names are tribal names, right? Alabamian, Alaskan, Arizona, Arkansas, Arkansas, California. These are all tribal names, y'all. Right? And why that's important, then they'll say observe the following, Alaska Native, Asian American, uh, Native American Indians, then they did observe the following. Then you go Native, then right after that it says Native American words. Words including tribal and other proper names of Indian, Alaska Native, Hawaiian, other groups are to be followed literally as to spelling and use of, use of spaces, di- diacriticals, hyphens, etc. So what this 5.25 is saying, when it comes to Native American words, you have to follow every, the way it's spelled, it's, it's proper pronunciation, it's proper spelling, I mean, uh, upper and lower, how it's styled, followed literally. Now, isn't this back to our proper names? So we in all caps, right? They're using this all caps, and then they take us out of our proper name. They're supposed to be following it literally. That's remedy, y'all. Let me read it again. Words including tribal and other proper names of Indian, Alaskan Native, Hawaiian, other groups are to be followed literally as to spelling and use of spaces, that diacriticals, hyphens, etc. They know you guys are indigenous people. This is why they're putting you in all caps. Yes, the other thing, incorporation, all of that's true, but the real underlying reason is they, ha- they, they, they got to take you out of your literal position. And you could use this right here as a, as, as a defense, as a rebuttal. Right here. See, all this document, when you read this, if, you, if you've been studying, you can see clearly where you need to go. But I know some of y'all just skating through, and I can tell by the questions you ask. 
and y'all not reading these documents that I have always told y'all to go read. Nah, I read, and y'all, and y'all find something else to do. But as always, I come up with the remedies, and you know, and I'm going to use it, and I'm, you know, to some degree, monetize it. I have no qualms about it. I feel no remorse about it. It's my hard work that I'm going to get compensated for. Why? Because I've been doing the reading. I've been studying this since 2016. In the background, I was studying. Then I came out late, early 2019 and showed y'all what I really knew. Letting other people get the, you know, let them have their day they, they in, you know, in the sun. I've been reading through these things, and some of the stuff I've read so long ago, I've read this before. But at the time, my, my mind wasn't able to make all of the connections because I needed more information. Now I have it. And I'm still going to get some more information. But let me keep reading before it gets to 8 o'clock. Other treaties also included mutual assistance packs provided for the exchange of prisoners, gained reciprocal assurance of territorial integrity, provided for the extradition of fugitives, from justice. These provisions are, of course, typical of international treaties. Oh, wait a minute. It's the, these provisions are typical of international treaties. See, international and foreign state is two different terms when it comes to these people. You guys are a foreign state separate from the United States. Okay? Finally, the Continental Congress mode of conducting business with Indian tribes shows that the Continental Congress recognized the tribe's free will and where it impacted directly on the tribes or tribal members. Congress' federal Indian policy always assumed or required the consent of the Indian tribe invo- involved. Let me stop right there. The reason why the asking conditions is so important when they keep talking about foreign states, what other state could they be talking about? Because if you come from another country, what do you have to do? You have to naturalize in to even get a U.S. passport, right? <coughs> you have to naturalize in. So why do they keep talking about, did you take it off to a foreign state? Or are you owe allegiance to a foreign state? They're talking about you, you connecting to your ancestors. They're really directing that to you. It could be no other people. Because other people got a different process to even qualify to get that. Why they kept saying foreign state instead of saying how the Nashoni, Iroquois, Confederation. Instead of using those words which they should have said, they use foreign state as a way to trick you. All right? For example, in the early 1770s, Congress also the use of Indians and soldiers in the American army only with the tribes to which they belong shall in council held in the customary manner can sit there too. So all of these, where they say Native Americans, American Indians was in these wars is because, but they first had to get approval. They didn't just jump in there and fuck the system. Again, in 1777, Congress resolved that the state of Pennsylvania must either remove its citizens who had settled illegally on tribal land, or pay the particular tribe involved for its land at the option of the tribes in, uh, involved. There it is. They got treaties. If their land been taken illegally, they had to work it out and compensate. And the tribe had the option. They didn't have to get something just shoved down their throat. They had the option to accept or not accept or take their land back or take payment for it. It is important to remember that Congress did not choose this respectful approach in its dealings with the Indian tribes out of some beneficial attitude or beneficence on its part. Rather, it did so as a matter of practical and historic necessity. In their own words, they knew it was necessary to maintain peace and balance. We must remember that at the time, that that is immediately before, hang on, y'all. Oh, hang on one second. Um, let me get my phone. So, 
almost my daughter's gonna call in a second. All right, we must remember that at the time that it is immediately before and for some considerable period of time following the ratification of the U.S. Constitution, it tries with significant players on the international scene. International scene. In the northern part of the Indian Department, Iroquois and other tribes and practically were, had in practically engaged during the Revolutionary War in hostilities with the United States and had signed peace treaties with the United States to end those hostilities. Many of the Iroquois tribes were not happy with the terms of those peace treaties and refused to accept new boundaries that the United States would impose. Hostilities continued as a result when frontiersmen flooded into Iroquois territory for settlement purposes, hostilities increased. Great Britain encouraged. All right, st- stand by, y'all. I shall be right back. Peace, everybody. This is Akeem L. from the Truth Tuesday show here on Hindsight Radio, the information station changing the nation. I just wanted to give you guys an update on our shows. Of course, you know, I'm on every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Eastern time. You could tune in at blogtalkradio.com forward slash hindsight 2020. Um, Also, we have other hosts we have wednesday 10 a.m eastern time we have the solomon temple show where we talk about health issues on thursday we have jessica and tasia of the divine connection show please tune in every thursday at 7 p.m eastern time blogtalkradio.com floor slash hindsight 2020 uh fridays we have uh freedom fridays with my son akeem l jr Oh, uh, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we have Sunday, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time with Bathsheba raising the independent thinkers. That's all about homeschooling or taking control of your child's mind through educating them yourselves. And then we have the Bun Bay show every Monday, 7 p.m. Eastern time, blogtalkradio.com, floor slash hindsight 2020. Also, if you want to call in, the call-in numbers for these shows are 425-569-5169, 425-569-5169, and our other call-in number is 563-999-3615. All right, peace. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um... All right, where was I? That's right. Uh, Prosperity is something that you do, just to reiterate what Reverend Ike just said. Okay, back to the document. Great Britain encouraged these tribal resentments, and because Great Britain, after the Treaty of Paris, attained significant forts themselves located within American territory, those forts and the practical possibility of definite alliance between the Iroquois and Great Britain greatly concerned the United States. The United States feared, in fact, that that had an alliance been formed between those two parties, it would threaten the actual existence of the United States itself. Hmm. Similar problems exist. The Creek Nation had, in 1784, in fact signed the Treaty of Alliance with the Nation of Spain, which provided for mutual assistance in the event of any invasion by outside force, frontiersmen, as had happened in the north, also invaded Southern Creek territory. Hostilities ensued, actually supported by the states of North Carolina and Georgia. As did Great Britain in the north, Spain and south supported the tribes in their efforts to resist these intrusions into their territory. There was, in fact, and in reality, an alliance as a result of the Treaty of 1784 between Spain and Creek Nation. The United States Fearful of the three-way alliance between northern tribes and Great Britain on the one hand, the Creek Nation in Spain on the other hand, and the Indian Nation among themselves in the West actually fear for its continued existence immediately before and immediately following ratification of the U.S. Constitution. So the United States, it's showing how the United States isn't what you've been believing it was. It's the 13 colony. They feared that they were going to collapse if these alliances happened. That, it, wh- why did they fear that? Because when they created the Constitution, they convoluted it. They made, added some provisions. 
took away some provisions that wasn't part of the agreement of what they were supposed to do, namely picking honorable men to be leaders and not having women involved in government. Your ancestors saw the, the falsehood in these people and said, well, we need to make alliances elsewhere. Okay, but let me keep reading. There were Indian leaders who sought to capitalize on the possibilities of these alliances. The great Mohawk Indian leader in the North Branch visited Great Britain on at least two occasions and came very close to actually forming an alliance that the United States feared at the time could threaten their actual existence. So if these people were so savage and uncivilized, how did they travel to Great Britain? This defies everything that you've been taught in school. Incipient and actual alliance continued before the adoption of the Constitution and for some years after the adoption of the Constitution. So the practical necessity of avoiding war, which threatened their very existence, colored the United States' perception of the relationship with the Indian tribe. So they conformed, the United States conformed, because they were fit in fear of these other alliances that would basically shut them down. Just their newly found confederacy down. These were the circumstances and the experience of the delegates who attended Constitutional Convention in 1787. Approximately three quarters of the delegates in attendance at that convention had in fact served as members of the Continental Congress and therefore had participated in the formulation of Indian policy. Some of the most significant contributors to the formulation of the Constitution had in fact been directly involved. James Madison and Thomas Jefferson had, as members of Congress, played major roles in drafting Indian clause and Articles of Confederation. James Wilson and Charles Pickney, who played a direct and significant role in drafting the Indian Commerce Clause of the U.S. Constitution, had served as members of the Continental Congress of the Standard Indian Committee. As a consequence, all of these members formulated their perception of the continuation of the relationship between the United States and the Indian tribes based on that experience and the practical necessity of the time. These experiences and practical necessities demonstrated that the Constitution and the Indian Commerce Clause confirm a true nation, the nation relationship between Indian tribes and the United States. As history shows, that relationship was bilateral, one between equals. The participants respected each other's territory, the civil authority over the, their own citizens, and each other's free will. Neither side presumed to dictate terms of the relationship to the other. That is, the quality of the nation-to-nation -nation relationship that existed at the time of the adoption of U.S. US Constitution. And that is the quality of the relation of that founding fathers of the Constitution assumed would continue. Thank you. There you go. There's, I mean, I could keep reading, but I'm not. Oh, because the next one is the uh, buying Deloria, Professor University of Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. So maybe next week I'll read that that one. So let's go back. Listen, this is true history. So all that stuff you've been learning in school in the trash because most of us don't even remember it because it was just so boring and it put us to sleep. Why did it put us to sleep? Because there was no truth in it. They had no relate. It, it, it just didn't make sense, a lot of this craziness they were teaching. So we fell asleep on it. We didn't want to hear it. You always get tired when you're not hearing the truth. Because your body is a, has a natural uh, repulse. It repulses things that are not true. But when it's truth and you're connecting with it, you want to hear more. Tell me more. Like when I read this, it has truth in it. People want to hear it. What is that? I want to hear that because it connects to you and your ancestors. It's true. That being said, someone's got their hand up. Let's see what they want to talk about. Seven eight six five nine seven. Peace to the guys, bro. Hello, hot team. This is Jamie. Peace. What's going on, brother? Hey man, you just called. You, you just called. You, you just helped me. Um, I just have a lot of light bulb just went off in my head as he was reading the um the, that that document um in regards to um you know nationality and our um, our heritage. So what? Yeah. What 
Yeah, what really went off in my head is that when I was looking at the Constitution, um, the Constitution for the United States, I realized that the what superseded is actually the the treaties and contract that was um, drawn up before the Constitution. So it's the actual treaty is the, the supreme law of the land, not the not the Constitution, because treaties came first and it superseded. So that it's had me thinking treaties, in my head. But yeah, it's the treaties. That's important. That's very important. But it's yeah. something else. It's something else. And yeah. it's very simple. It's very simple. We're just looking at it too complicated. Honor thy mother and thy father so that your late days can be long on this earth so that you can continue to run your government, so you continue to run your nation. So that means you got to go back into those ancestral uh, traditions and follow them. Yep. There's no other way around it. Y'all can play games along and be in these Jesus free churches Thinking y'all gonna get there, y'all not. Y'all been trying. We've been trying to get there with that for what, uh, uh, all these years, and where's it gotten us? Still getting out. Uh, still, our people getting shot on the street. No respect. Yeah, I see that okay. constantly. I mean, you're seeing it right now. <laughs> if um, you want that yeah. life, stay there. But I'm telling you, the real truth is going to figure out who you are, where you came from, and follow that. <laughs> Yep. You see, then do- the Hindus come here, they open up schools, guess what? They got all of these gods that they pray to, they got their instance, they got their gods on their wall, and guess what? They thrive. Yep. Okay? Yeah, that's that's what we need to get back to. Right. You got to get back to what, what, what our ancestors left us. Being yeah. in tune with nature. That was one of the things, respecting all life, big and small. Yeah. And, yeah so. and, and, and another point I want to bring out, um, um, like when you was going through the through the material, and I was reading one of your vid- your your videos about the nationality, um, the passport subterfuge, subterfuge, how they <laughs> they really don't have definition for the words that they're using, so it's it's like open to um, subjective interpretation right. as we far as the, a foreign state. It says someone's owes allegiance yeah. to a foreign state. They use the definition, the word in the definition. The confusion that, that the foreign sense. state they're talking about is your ancestral uh, government. Yep. That's all. Not that part if you out. read this, the only purpose <laughs> that the, the, the colonies were created was to bring peace within the 13 colonies and to bring, have a relationship with the indigenous people of the land. That's what it was created for. A government-to-government yep. relationship. And they feared that they would lose that relationship if those nations went and formed a pact with Great Britain. Yeah. So they just... kept, when you hear this story of Christopher Columbus coming over here, finding all these indigenous people like they were stupid and ignorant, and they just fell for anything, how would they travel into Great Britain to the form an alliance? How would they travel into France? That means these yep. people were already well advanced, even more yep. than the colonies, because they couldn't figure out how to get their stuff together. So they needed help. Yep. My ancestry help. Yeah. Yeah, but keep on. That's all I want to point out. You keep on doing your thing. I'm right here listening and taking okay, notes. Man. Thank you. All right, peace. All right, thank you. Peace. Um, one thing I want to reinforce, like Jamie, he's part of my uh, private class, and I want to give thanks to all of the people that signed up for the second class. They had a good response. Uh, it's still room for a few more, uh, about five more, I think it is. Uh, I got to check. It's still a little bit room. So we only did one class. So I'll allow for five more people to join. I'll allow you to get in there. Uh, actually, two spots, in my, three more, actually two more, because two people um, have made arrangements with me. So, um, it's still room. Because in there, I'm telling y'all, I'm telling the people where I'm going with this. I'm telling you. And they're going to get the information once I finish drafting everything. They're getting it. 
you know, first, and then I might release it out there. But the people who took the time to invest in themselves, invest in this knowledge of freedom, will get it. So if you still want to join, the membership is, is still on the website, still at the discount rate. Uh, I'm trying to get, you know, fill it up. And then after that, that'll be it. I probably won't reopen it until uh, spring of next year because it's a lot of work involved. Uh, 901265. Nine zero one two six five. Peace, God. Peace. What's going on? It's all good, hey, my going, healthy Linda, welcome. How you doing? It's all good, and I'm just so excited. I came about this document that you have shared with us, and uh, I was able to go through some things here, and I just wanted to uh, just to share a few things that just kind of jumped out at me. Okay, and, go uh, ahead. It, it, it states that uh, our young men were not ever to go and fight in their wars unless they volunteered to do so. They were not right. to draft our young men. They right. were not to draft Ooh. our young men. Okay. Okay. Now. That, okay. Now. That's, that's you know what that means. <laughs> right? Yes. And also you know I understand from reading this that we were never to integrate with them. Integration mm-hmm. was a no-no. We all Wasn't had equal rights. Right. We were separate but equal. We coexisted as two separate nations. We right. would never be to they had their separate with their schools. Children. Right. We were this, we were not to go to school with them. Nope. 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 This is what Brown that, versus education was all about. See that is the, the marketing the marketing thing on that was Try getting us. They took these raggedy teachers, Martin Luther King. Uh, <laughs> I know y'all celebrate his birthday and all that crap. They took preachers like him, who was ignorant of the history. He might have known. He knew. Later on, he said he integrated people to a burning house and allowed them to be called black colored. And forced the hand, of, not really forced the hand of the government. And see, when you are cunning, when you are playing the art of war, one of the best tricks you can play on your opponent is to make him want something that you want him to have. That that you really like, make it like you don't want him to have it, but you really want him to have it. And, and they the programmed trick. us to have the desire <laughs> the to have something that we were not to have in the first place. Right. This is, the whole reason why Hollywood was created is to, miss some, to, to create a narrative because the government controlled the information. Mm-hmm. So, so they promoted this whole integration into schools. And, oh, I want my equal rights. Just like this crap that's going on now that people hating Trump, they hate Biden, and, and, and everybody's going for all of these, these psychops, these 42 fake outs, watching the news and hearing mm-hmm. him say this and hearing that one say that. And, you know, when we know Sound all these people are not really for you, they're not for you. It's just to Mm-mm. get you to participate in their false government, their false god. Mm-hmm. So, Akeem, I think. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Finish. I'll finish after that. I think one of the biggest problems that we have as copper colored people is we do not know who we are. We do not know where we came from, but everybody else does, and they're sitting back watching. Yeah, they're sitting back laughing at you. Yeah, laughing, hoping that we they never told, wake up. Listen, when I, you, you've been in the seminars. When I tell when white folks or Europeans are sitting in that class and I tell them who they really are and who we really are, they are in agreement with what I'm mm-hmm. saying. It's our people who disagree. The people that look like us that want to fight you and say, no, that's not true. They want to hold on to the lie. I'm black. I'm African-American. I'm from this, this, that, and the other, you know? So what I was saying before was this. 
they created this scheme to make it like they didn't want you in their school so that they can upset the balance of education by making you want something you couldn't have. It was never meant to be. Which forced you into their schools to get their indoctrination. There you have it. Because right now, I, 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 the, the hardest people to get to do homeschooling is people that look at, like us. Because we're other so people comfortable. people are willing to do it. Yes. We're so comfortable, groups, comfortable with someone else doing it for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't do that. That's the reason mm-hmm. if we don't stop it now, it won't get done. We have mm-hmm. the we have the tools, we have the time, and we need to put it in our children because if we don't do it, no one else is going to do it. Nope. Nobody's gonna do it. You're right. Right. And I because... found out Go ahead. Go ahead, Akeem. I'm just excited. That 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 Brown versus education, if you read deep in the document, it says that the Moors this was all in Delaware, and I just read in the document how significant Delaware was. Now, in Delaware, Moors and Indians were the same. They looked the same. Yeah, I know. I'm mm-hmm. the Moors. And I got the document to show you where the Moors, the Eastern Delaware Moors, or Indians were the Moors. So Moors has had play a role that was on the East. Right? That's how they was identified, right? So, mm-hmm. but... And they even had that on their driver's license. They could put in, they put M for more. Now, it was in that document that the, that the Moors cannot attend the same school, or the Indians could attend the same school as what they call white. White had their own school, and colored and Negroes had their own school. But the That's Moors, the none of those groups of people could go to the Moors school. No, because no. I, I'm gonna read it. I did the show. I'm gonna read it again. I'm gonna pull it up. Brown versus education was a psych op. It, was a, it was a fake out. That. It was a fake out that makes you think, "Oh, we getting equal rights?" No, we were busting ourselves down to the level of these other people who had just so we the Europeans who had just become new to a a a, a, a government that was elected by the people because they came from a monarchy. And the Negroes, the so-called deaf, dumb, and blind people who didn't know who they were. <laughs> and they didn't know who – they were used to subjugation. They were actually right. indentured – they were indentured servants, which another word for that is a slave. Right. Right. Absolutely. Came over as. And one mm-hmm. other thing I wanted to point out was George Morgan, who was the first Indian agent. Uh-huh. And he made a – which was very interesting. This is just a few things he pointed out. He said, they were inclined to do justice in all things, promote our happiness, and render to us every service in their power if you just tell us what you want. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, were, they were at our command. In some way, they start maneuvering to overthrow what we were doing to provide them a place because when they came over here, they were not the best of people. Uh-uh. They were the worst, the worst. Uh-uh. And they, they were the people kicked better. out of the society that they just sent over there to work for the people who had property on this land. They were coming over. That's what I tell you. I need to watch that show, Bark Skin. Mm-hmm. See, it shows how they were coming over here working for other Europeans. Europeans mm-hmm. coming over here being slaves for Europeans, and they had to appear the three years they had to serve out their contract. They had to serve that contract. And see out. how they started manipulating things to increase their territory. They would go in. Europeans would go kill other Europeans, right? Mm-hmm. And then blame it on the Iroquois or the Haudenosaunee people or the Mohawks, or whoever was in that territory, and say they did it. They were always lying. They was creating wars between them to, to push their territory get gain more land. Because, you know, they war always body. disrupts peace, and, 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 and people lose. Mm-hmm. They were after that That's land. That's what they were doing. And see, it was the French, and then it was the English, 
And then it was the Irish. Okay. They were all they 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 like they treated the Irish was like the lowest on the totem pole. They was what we would mm-hmm. consider what they call niggers today. That's niggers. how they mm-hmm. So, because the other English, they were Protestant, and they didn't like Catholics. It's all religious. All of these ideologies and these wars were religiously motivated. But then wow. they only had their fight between each other, and then they said, well, you know, we're tired of this, but we got to get more power. And it also shows you how powerful those nations were, that the United States could, did not want to lose that friendship. So that that influence. They, they even they, they, they had to make the compact, that means that they had to be very powerful. Mm-hmm. Very and, and, powerful. And, 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 if you watch this show, Barkskin, they say, they were very, whenever the Iroquois Confederation came up, now that was a French term, that was their real name, that's what the man said. It's holding a show. I just found that fight from you. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so it goes to show you that they were in fear of these people because their numbers were so high. Mm-hmm. They outnumbered them. <laughs> and even in the show, it, it, it tells you that. Yeah. When they talk about the Iroquois, you know, be careful. But they did not <laughs> want to war with them. Because if they mm-hmm. came out and fought, the, the Haudenosaunee people and all of those tribes that made the the, 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 the great uh, law of peace were peaceful people. They did not want war. But if war was necessary, they would do it. They and they didn't want that. Why would a nation make a treaty? Right? They, they, mm-hmm. now, the, these, these, the, this, the great law of peace brought them all together. They didn't want war. Right? Right. So they would have brought war. So these lower, these colonies with little bit of people or numbers, their numbers wasn't that great. Still not that great to this day. They, uh, well, we need to make peace with these people because they can wipe us out. Because it just, mm-hmm. really what that woman was saying was if they don't make peace with these people, we will not exist, meaning they would get wiped out. Totally. They and then not they was you know yeah we won't exist yeah that means we go they gonna come and take over that territory take them thirteen territories back take it back. So why would they when you really look into it the fear of it all was we 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 got to make peace with these people or we are gonna be out of here. Back to England we go or captives one or the other or assimilating into their society. But the trick was they okay. got us into this religious trance. And we yep. we fell for it. And in that in that audio I played, he talked about it. All mm-hmm. right, we went for it. But it's I, I really appreciate uh, you bringing this to us, Akeem. It's it's really opening up a lot of eyes and letting us see exactly how we just we didn't get the truth. Didn't get the truth. Didn't so get the I truth. appreciate. But in this is the remedy. It's, it's telling you what you need to do. Talk yes, about this the remedy. War. <laughs> it is. It's telling you exactly what you need to do. It's it's really? a beautiful thing, and I appreciate yeah. the work that you put to this. And one last thing, I want to congratulate you and Beth uh, on your you. engagement. And it's it's a great thing to have someone that has your back and can stand there with you in this walk. Because when you're in this walk, you have to have someone that can understand you and be by your side, and that's very yep. important. That is very, very important. important. Yes, thank you. Well, All I right. wish you and Beth the best. All right, peace out. All right, peace. All right, let's go to uh, the next caller. 25347. Yeah, peace to the gods, I can. Hello? Hey, peace. What's going peace on? Peace to the gods. Can you hear me? How you doing? Yeah, how's it going? I can hear you good. Hey, listen. Everything's going great. I want to be the... I, I want to be the second one to congratulate you on uh, on your engagement. <laughs> that's a, that's really thank great. You, my wife, you. she's going to flip. My wife, when I tell her that, she's going to flip out because <laughs> she's happy for you. <laughs> oh, I said, tell her, I tell her, thank you for me. You had a great woman there. Yeah. I was pleased to yeah, meet her last time I was here. <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah that's why I'm so okay. calm now. That's why I'm calm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Definitely. <laughs> on yeah, that document yeah. you was reading, 
Is that the uh-huh. PDF that you gave us last week, right? Yes, same PDF. Okay, I just want to make sure. Okay, thanks a lot. Yes. Peace to the gods. All right, peace. Yeah, I'm going to – I also have the actual Great Law of Peace is written in the uh, native tongue language, and then they translate it to the English. So I'll be reading that probably – I'm going to be on this for a while. And as I read it, because as I read it, guess what it does? It unravels things for me. Now, I've read all of that. I think I did a video on that portion that I read. But as I was reading more of it, it brought, this is why I'm reading it. Because as I'm reading it, I'm adding to the arsenal of what we need to take our rightful position in this world. You know? All right. Uh, I don't have any more hands up. That was it. So with that being said, I'm going to close out the show here at 8.32. Be sure to tune in to the other shows, uh, Solomon Templeton AM Eastern Time, uh, Divine Connection with Jessica and Tasia, 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursday, uh, Freedom Fridays, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time with Akeem Jr. Um, and then Sundays, the... Uh, Raising Independent Thinking Show with Bathsheba. Um, and then on Mondays, we have Brother uh, Bun Bay. He's on Mondays, and he's a uh, supporter of his show. 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Monday. Um, since I've added these, before I let y'all go, but since I've added these hosts, and... um. Little strange things been happening. I won't go into all the details, but the strange things that happen are coming up is opposition. And I'm putting it out there. Every time an opposition comes, it's an opportunity to be more successful. And that's all it's done. So I thank you for all the opposition because when you oppose, you just make everything better. Life doesn't get better without opposition. All right, peace.